Gopi Janavalla Bhaan Giri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janavanjana Yashoda Nandana Raja Jana Ranjana Ramana Tira Vanachari Ramana Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Vaja Jana Ranjana 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 Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Hare Ram, 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मीठाई गौरा हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो मीठाई गौरा हरि बो Jai Babu Pai, Babu Pai, Babu Pai, Jai Babu Pai. Jai Jai Babu Pai, Babu Pai, Babu Pai, Jai Babu Pai. जय मिताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बो ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna, good morning to everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Today we're reading from Canto number 10, chapter number 54, entitled The Marriage of Krishna and Rukmini. And today we're reading from text number 26. Yavanna mehato bane Sayita Munchadari Kam Smayan Krishna Dhanus Chitva Sadbir Vivyada Lukminam Yavana Mehato Bane Sayita Munchadari Kam Smayan Krishna Dhanus Chitva Sadbir Vivyada Rukminam Yavanna Mehato Bane Saitha Munchadari Kaam Smayan Krishna Dhanushchitva Sadbir Vivyada Rukminam Sai 
Yavat while na not me my hata killed bane by the arrows sayita you lie down muncha release darikam the girl smayan smiling krishna lord krishna dhanu his bow Chitva breaking Sadbhi with six arrows Vivyada pierced Rukminam Rukmi Translation and purport by the disciples of His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Release the girl before you are struck dead by my arrows and made to lie down. In response to this, Lord Krishna smiled, and with six arrows, he struck Rukmi and broke his bow. Purport. Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur points out that in fact, Lord Krishna was meant to lie down together with Rukmini on a beautiful bed of flowers. But out of shyness, Rukmi did not directly mention this point. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshodun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam rupa kadamayam dadati svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapadakamalan Shri Guru An Vaishnavamstra Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahaganaraganathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamsha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpataro Bhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhanityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shila Prabhupada Ki before I begin, I'm uh, very humbled to be in front of all of you. So many senior Vaishnavas are here. Um, you are all extensions of Srila Prabhupada's mercy. And Srila Prabhupada's mercy coming through you is the only we reason we're able to do something. So I beg for your permission, your blessings. And uh, please forgive me if I make any mistakes. Anyone who wants to do something special in their life will have to go through certain stages. These stages are standard. We find them in the characters of the Bhagavatam. We find them in the lives of the contemporary Acharyas. And these transition points we'll also find in the lives of the great devotees who live amongst us today. To do something heroic, to do something wonderful, there is a typical journey. In the life of someone heroic, there will be a call to adventure. 
something will trigger them to seek beyond just the normal uh, things that people usually pursue. But then there will be doubts, there will be uncertainties, there will be difficulties. At one point, the person who wants to do something special has to journey into the unknown. They have to make an endeavor which causes them to take a risk. And when they do that, there will be opposition. And there will be challenges. And there will be many, many impediments on the journey. But on that journey where there's so many oppositions and impediments, there will be aid, there will be help, there will be people who come along to walk with you on that journey. And then finally, there will be a victory, a revelation, a great achievement. If you look at every great devotee of Krishna, each one of them will have gone through these six stages. Here in the Bhagavatam, we're reading about Rukmini and she's no different. She had a call to adventure because all the great souls were coming to the palace and they were glorifying Krishna. And if you hear glorification of Krishna, then definitely it will create a call to adventure. Practically everyone in this room had a call to adventure because you heard about Krishna. You heard about Krishna's philosophy and then it ignited something within you to go beyond. So Rukmini heard about Krishna from the great souls and therefore she developed an amazing attraction for Krishna. But could she pursue it? There were doubts, there were uncertainties because she may have had certain plans but her family had other plans. In particular her brother Rukmi who had a different idea of who she should give her heart to. And so all the arrangements had been made for Rukmini to be married to Shishupal. All arrangements made by her brother. So there was a doubt, an uncertainty. I've given my heart to Krishna, but will I be able to connect with Krishna? Will I be able to achieve Krishna? Will I have that relationship with Krishna that I so much seek? But then she made a journey into the unknown. She wrote a letter. She wrote a letter in which she revealed the contents of her heart and she sent it with a Brahmin messenger to Krishna. She prayed to Krishna, come and rescue me, come and kidnap me, come and uh, release me from the imprisoned situation I find myself in. It was an unknown. And then there was opposition. Because as all the arrangements were being made for Rukmini's marriage, then word was on the street. The doubt was there in the ether that Krishna is going to come. Balarama, they're both going to come. And maybe they're going to upset the course of events here. So it's very interesting in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Amazing, beautiful arrangements are being made for the uh, upcoming marriage ceremony of Rukmini and Shishupal. But at the same time, it almost feels like it's a simultaneous preparation for war. <laughs> it's amazing because there's flags and there's festoons and there's dancers and there's music and there's all these decorations and there's joy in the air and at the same time Damagosh, the father of Shishupal it almost seems as though he's lining up the armies because he knows something may happen here there's some uncertain situation here so it's a very kind of interesting dual scene. And so there's all this opposition. But then Rukmini gets the aid because Krishna comes. Krishna comes on his chariot. And Krishna sees that yes, there is Rukmi, there is Jarasan, there are so many warriors who are trying to oppose me, who are trying to oppose the union of myself and Rukmini. But Krishna... Uh, it said like a lion steals the deer from the midst of the uh, jackals. Krishna takes Rukmini and rescues her. 
And then there is this great victory, there is this great uh, connection, reunion between Krishna and Rukmini. So this is the journey of someone who wants to find Krishna, someone who wants to connect with Krishna. So the Bhagavatam is very, very beautiful because the Bhagavatam basically, in the characters of the Bhagavatam, we're learning about every single situation that we may potentially count, encounter in our desire to connect with Krishna. How many of us here had opposition from our family? How many of, how many of you here, when you uh, began hearing about Krishna, heard it from your near and dear ones that you've gone crazy? How many of you felt a conflict between the opinions, the expectations of the people around you and what resonated within your own heart? All of us. And this is exactly what Rukmini went through. Uh, when you come to Krishna consciousness, don't expect everyone around you to agree with the situation. His Holiness Sri Swami would say, for most people coming to Krishna consciousness is very difficult because of Mahapap. There are many, many bad things in our previous incarnations. But for Indians, the main problem is Mahapap. <laughs> mother and father maybe. In Rukmini's case, mother and father were favorable, but uh, Rukmi was not favorable. They had other ideas. So we have to understand that the Bhagavatam is revealing to us what difficulties we may encounter on the journey. And maybe the near and dear ones around you will not be favorable to your journey towards Krishna. Maybe they want you to experience sense gratification, number one. Or maybe they want to have sense gratification with you, number two. Or maybe through you, they want to experience sense gratification. This is the condition. One of the three, definitely. Either they want you to have sense gratification, they want to have sense gratification with you, or through you and through your life, they want to experience some sense gratification. And therefore, oftentimes, we will experience that we have opposition. This is again in so many stories of the Bhagavatam. Prahlad and Hiranyakashipu, classic story. Uh, father is not agreeing, father is inimical, father is aggressive, and so much animosity. Hiranyakashipu cannot stand Prahlad's movement towards Krishna, his natural movement of the heart towards Krishna. Can't tolerate. Even we find in the sixth canto of the Bhagavatam, Daksha is having such a hard time in populating the universe. Finally, after so many austerities, he uh, has union with his wife, and he has 10,000 sons, the Haryashvas. So it's a cause of celebration. 10,000 sons, when you want to be a progenitor, is good news. But the bad news is there's someone lurking and that person uh, is very desirous to give Narayan to everyone because his name, Narada, means one who gives Dan of Narayan, one who gives Krishna to everyone. And so Narada comes and he sees these 10,000 sons who are of impeccable character who have such devotion, who have such culture, who have such control of their mind and senses, who are basically just dry firewood for the spark of bhakti. And Narada says, why are you wasting your time? You're going to get married. You're going to go through this whole cycle. Why don't you just renounce? It's a very happy life. As His Holiness Jai Dvaita Maharaj once said, someone asked him, what do you have to do to give up? What do you have to give up to be a renunciate? And Maharaj said, suffering. <laughs> so, 
Daksha was outraged. Ten thousands of his sons just immediately renounced. Back to the drawing board. Plan B has another thousand sons, the Savalashvas. Then, double whammy, Narad Muni comes again. <laughs> History repeats itself. Deja vu. And then another thousand sons immediately renounce. Daksha becomes outraged. And Daksha curses Narad Muni. I curse you not to be able to stay in the same place. And that just fuels the activities of Narad. <laughs> So like this, uh, the Bhagavatam depicts all the challenges that we will go through. So when someone faces challenges with their family members, challenges with the person around them, they should understand, I definitely, now I am in parampara. <laughs> this is, uh, and this is the beauty of why the Bhagavatam is so beautiful. Because the Bhagavatam, every single thing that we're going to go through, the Bhagavatam is already uh, teaching us how to deal with it. Maybe in our life we will find out about a terminal illness. And then we turn to the Bhagavatam, first canto. And then we remember Parikshit Maharaj, who found out that he had seven days to live. And what did he do? Atma Jaya Sutta Gara Pashudra Vinabandushu Rajecha Vikale Nityam Virudham Mamatam Jaho Jaya, he gave up his wife. Sutta, he gave up his children. Pashu, he gave up his animals. Dravina, he gave up his treasury. Bandushu, he gave up all his social connections. Raje Chavi Kalainityam, he gave up his whole kingdom. And he just went and he fasted. With no other thought in his mind except to fix his mind on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is how the great souls face the news. The Bhagavatam teaches us. Maybe in our life we'll make a mistake. Maybe we'll be flying high by the mercy of the Vaishnavas, but then we make a mistake. So then we turn to the fifth canto of the Bhagavatam and we remember how Bharat, Pradur Bhave Bhavet Krama, he was uh, on the level of Bhav. Tata Prema Bhudanjati. Prema was just around the corner. But he made a mistake. But he didn't just make a mistake, he also teaches us how to recover from the mistake. And therefore, we always have the power to say, this is not how the story is going to end. We can change if we take shelter of the instructions and the accounts of the Bhagavatam. Maybe in our life we'll have problems in our service. So then we turn to the second canto of the Bhagavatam and we remember about how Brahmaji had the hardest service. You know, managing a household is hard, managing a temple is even harder, and managing the universe is complex, to say the least. And Brahmaji had difficulties. Uh, sometimes we say, nobody's listening to me. I'm in charge of this service, but nobody's listening to me. But then the four Kumaras didn't listen to Brahmaji. <laughs> Brahmaji was instructed by the Supreme Lord. His entire body was made of intelligence and they were born from his own body, yet they didn't listen to him. We may say, I'm doing my service, but people are criticizing me. Well, even Brahmaji was criticized. Jado Dikshitam Pakshma Drisham. Because the gopis looked at Brahma and said, 14 worlds, all right. 8.4 million species, all right. But you made a big blunder because you created bodies which have eyes, which are covered by eyelids, which blink. And that means for a moment we can't see Krishna. But it was a transcendental criticism. Brahmaji had no help in his service. He had no idea how to do it. 
So Krishna told him, situate yourself in austerity. So in our life, maybe it's like that. We have a service to do. But Prabhu, there's no one to help. Tapa. Austerity. There's no funds. Tapa. Austerity. His Holiness Jananandra Maharaj was saying yesterday about how in Srila Prabhupada's time, devotees would just go. One, one devotee, sometimes not even two, one devotee with no facility, with nothing, and just start um, an outpost of the Hare Krishna movement, such a beautiful spirit. So, like this, so many challenges may be there, maybe we'll lose a loved one. So then we turn to the Bhagavatam 6th canto and we remember how Chitra Ketu lost his son. Yes, Harsha Shoka. Those relationships can sometimes bring us so much joy, but then also be the cause of so much lamentation. And so Angira Rishi, uh, Narad Muni, they come and they teach us how to deal with the pain of grief, the pain of loss. Therefore, the Bhagavatam is our constant companion through the journey of life because it teaches us how to deal with everything. Madeka bandho mad sangin mad guru mad mahadhana man nishtaraka mad bhagya mad ananda namo stute After Sanatana Goswami was gifted the Bhagavatam by a Brahmin boy and he continued reading the Bhagavatam every single day then he had that very beautiful realization Madeka bandhu The Bhagavatam is my only friend Matsangin, the Bhagavatam is my constant companion through the journey of this life. Madguru, the Bhagavatam is my spiritual teacher. Man Mahadhana, the Bhagavatam is my greatest wealth. Man Nishtaraka, the Bhagavatam is lifting me up. Madananda, the Bhagavatam is the source of my happiness. Namostute, therefore I always worship the Bhagavatam. So like this, through this story of the Bhagavatam of Rukmini being uh, kidnapped by Krishna, we're learning so much about what it means to be a devotee of Krishna. Rukmini's amazing characteristic was that she was so fearless. She was ready to take a risk. In this today's verse, Krishna is coming and Rukmi is shouting all kinds of abuse at Krishna. And in this particular verse, Rukmi tells Krishna that if you don't release the girl, you'll be struck dead by my arrows. You'll be lying on the ground, Krishna. But what the Acharyas explain is that in the blasph uh, blasphemy, in the um, harsh statements of demoniac personalities, uh, Mother Saraswati also tricks. And there's some truth there. And so while uh, Rukmi is telling Krishna, I'm going to shoot you down and you're going to be lying on the ground, the secret meaning is that Krishna is going to shoot Rukmi down and then eventually Krishna will be lying down, but not on the ground. Krishna will be lying down in a bed of arrows with Rukmini. Because yes, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Partho Danur Dhara, Tatra Shrir Vijayo Bhutir, Dhruvanitir Matir Mama. Wherever there is Krishna and wherever there is the resolute devotee, Tatra Shrir, there must be great beauty, extraordinary opulence, victory, and morality, uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. So definitely Krishna will win. Krishna will rescue her. So Rukmini's fearlessness is uh, such an incredible uh, lesson for all of us. Um, there's a beautiful memory by His Grace Sham Sunda Prabhu. And he's talking about how Srila Prabhupada, he said, always told us, take a risk for Krishna. He said, Srila Prabhupada told us, if you take a risk for Krishna, then Krishna has to come and save you. And he said, we tested that to the max. 
in this beautiful memory, he talks about how in London, the devotees had rented the building, but they had no money. But their desire to serve, their desire to establish uh, a temple for Krishna, a temple for Srila Prabhupada was so great. So they had no money. The uh, landlord was about to evict them. And they said, one day we just went down, we walked down, we walked into the street. There was not a soul in sight, but there, were just, uh, there was just money flying in the air. He said, we just caught hold of the money. We looked around, there was no one in sight. They paid the rent. He said it was such a special time. We expected things like this to happen. And then in that interview he said, but maybe that spirit has died down. Maybe we've become a little comfortable. And uh, maybe we can take more risk for Krishna then maybe Krishna will come. Krishna will kidnap. One social scientist, he says, hard times create strong people. And he said, strong people create good times. And good times create weak people. And weak people create hard times. <laughs> and he said, civilization goes like this. It's an interesting observation. Hard times create strong people. But maybe good times, comfortable times, can also create a laziness, a lethargy, a complacency in which maybe we're coming a little weak. So we hope uh, we will be the exception to that. Rukmini, through this narration, is teaching us so much about fearlessness. Rakshishyati, di vishvasho. That strong faith that Krishna will definitely come to protect me. Even till the nth hour, she was not sure. The day before, no sign of Krishna. Is he really going to come? But sure enough, because she had that faith. Shraddha Shabde, Vishwash Kohe, Sudrida Nishjoy, Krishna Bhakti Koile Sarva Karma Krita Hoy. Shraddha means the Vishwas, the strong, unshakable, unbreakable, unmovable conviction. Krishna Bhakti Koile, that if I engage in Krishna's service, if I give my heart, my energy, my mind to Krishna, Sarva Karma Krita Hoy, I'll achieve everything. Everything will be done. Krishna will manage everything. So, to become fearless, to become fearless is so much a part of Krishna consciousness. They asked Srila Prabhupada once, what do you feel when you chant Hare Krishna? And Prabhupada said, I feel no fear. Maybe the people who are fearless, it's not that they don't have fears. It's not that the people who are fearless don't have fears. But the people who have, are fearless have a purpose which is much bigger than their fears. To become fearless doesn't mean to lose all your fear. But it means your purpose, your goal, your vision, what you're trying to achieve is so great, is so wonderful, is so beautiful that all the fears pale into insignificance. And so we see that in all the great devotees to take a risk. To quote one of the Acharyas of our time, Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> who said the only strategy that's sure to fail in a world that's constantly changing is to not take a risk so sometimes we think not taking a risk 
is the safe option. But not taking a risk is just as risky as taking a risk. Not making a decision is just as risky as making a decision. Because everything we do in life is a risk. And so, Rukmini, uh, we try to absorb that mood of fearlessness by which she was able to attract Krishna. <clears throat> the interesting thing about Rukmini is that it's not just that she caused Krishna to come to Kundina, but Lochandas Thakur in Chaitanya Mangal, he actually reveals something else about Rukmini. That Rukmini was the original cause of not just Krishna coming to Kundina, but of Krishna coming to the world as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because in Chaitanya Mangal, Lochandas Thakur tells a beautiful story of how one day, Krishna was at the palace of Satyabham. And of course, Rukmini in her palace was wondering, will Krishna come to my palace? But then a messenger came, knocked on the door and said, yes, yes, Krishna is coming, make all the arrangements. So Rukmini began running around, she cleaned, she prepared everything, she made all the aesthetic arrangements, so that when Krishna would come, uh, everything would be just perfect for his pleasure. And then, sure enough, Krishna came, he knocked on the door, Rukmini opened the door, she invited Krishna in. She sat Krishna down, she began to wash Krishna's feet. And they were having a beautiful interaction, the occasion was joyous, the interaction was beautiful. And then out of the blue, Rukmini began crying. And so Krishna looked at Rukmini and said, what's the problem? Everything was beautiful. What went wrong? And Rukmini looked at Krishna and said, you'll never know. So Krishna said, I'll never know. Vedaham samatitani vartaman and charjana bhavishyani chabhutani mamtu vedana kaschana. I know past, present, future, I know all living beings, me nobody knows. <laughs> but you're saying I don't know? Rukmini said, you will never know. So Krishna was baffled. He said, what is it that I don't know? And Rukmini said, you're here today and we're having such beautiful interactions. But one day you leave. You leave the palace, you go somewhere else. And then we don't know where you are, we don't know when you'll come back. You don't know what that pain of separation feels like. Do you know what we feel? Do you know what Srimati Radharani feels? And then Krishna was defeated. Yes, there is something I don't know you win. And therefore it said Krishna walked away from that palace, Lochandas Thakur says, with the Tao in his mind. There's something I don't know. And therefore he resolved in the next incarnation, Radha Bhava Dyuti Suvalitam Krishna Nomi Swarupam I'll come in the Radha Bhav. I'll come uh, to experience what Srimati Radharani experiences uh, in her loving connection with Krishna. So, just see the power of Rukmini. <laughs> she was able to attract Krishna, to kidnap her, but she was also said by our Acharyas to be one of the triggers behind Krishna coming to this world as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Srila Prabhupada was so kind, he gifted us the Bhagavatam. He gifted us these beautiful accounts so that we can think deeply about the emotions, the character, um, how these individuals conduct themselves in their relationship with Krishna 
to give us all the clues of how we can also develop um, such beautiful love for Krishna. In Gopal Champu, Jiva Goswami says something beautiful. He says, I heard about Krishna and it touched my heart. He said, but when I read about the devotees and how they love Krishna, and when I read about the devotees and how they exchange in loving pastimes with Krishna, then it melted my heart. Yes, to hear about Krishna is wonderful. But when we hear about how the devotees are willing to do anything to connect with Krishna, then he said, that melted my heart. And so, this is one of Srila Prabhupada's greatest gifts to us, the Bhagavatam and the accounts of the Bhagavatam. And today we remember and meditate on Rukmini, who was willing to encounter anything and go through whatever disruption in her life so that Krishna uh, would come to save her and she would uh, fulfill her heart's desire to be uh, connected in that way to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Rama. Grantharaj Srimad Bhagavatam ki Jai Shila Prabhupada ki so Many senior Vaishnavas are here so I first uh, ask them if they would like to add anything or correct uh, Otherwise we can Yes Maharaj Oh yes Okay <coughs> take sannyas or take on a managerial responsibility and people are showing gratitude but at the same time you're trying to stay humble so how do we find that happy medium between the two of not overexerting ourselves and becoming puffed up striving for maybe you know some recognition not, not that you want the recognition but doing things which are recognized as you know Maybe your, our ego's getting, where does the ego get, come into play with this? Yeah. So, <clears throat> the highest aspiration of the Vaishnavas is to please the other Vaishnavas. When Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami was living in Brindavan, then he went to the Govindaji temple. And then all of the Vaishnavas there asked him, please write Chaitanya Charitamrita. And what was his reply? Murkhani chak shudre ami vishaya lalas Vaishnavagya bole kore eiteka sahash He said, you've asked me to write Chaitanya Charitamrita. Murkha, I'm a fool. Nicha, I'm so low. Kshudra Mui Vishaya Lalas, I'm constantly meditating on sense gratification. Vaishnavagya, but you've ordered me. The Vaishnavas have asked me. The Vaishnavas have told me to do it. Eiteka Sahash, and therefore I've become extremely enthusiastic to try to complete this endeavor. So when the highest aspiration is Vaishnav Seva, to please the Vaishnavas, when that is the motivation behind whatever we try to do, then Krishna's blessings will be there to keep us humble. Krishna's blessings will be there to empower us with the necessary strength. His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj used to say very beautifully, when the one's desire to serve is so great that they go beyond their capacity, but they continue on without hesitation, at that moment, empowerment occurs. And therefore, if we try to keep as the North Star, uh, pleasing the Vaishnavas, um, practically, Srila Prabhupada met Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur a handful of times. And maybe he asked a handful of questions. But behind every single question was the same question. How can I please you? And... And so I think that's where our protection lies. And then, of course, there are other telltale signs when one is going beyond their capacity. 
if one's sadhana is dropping, if one's relationships are being damaged, if one has no capacity to keep good consciousness in their uh, service, then maybe they begin to understand, maybe I'm endeavoring beyond my capacity. And therefore we look out for those warning signs. And then we always have Vaishnavas who can give us feedback. So I think like that, those are some aspects by which we can try to serve, go beyond our capacity, take a risk, do something wonderful for Krishna, and at the same time, make sure that we uh, maintain some good balance. These are some thoughts. Thank you, <coughs> Thank you Maharaj, for bringing us closer to Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, in the purport, very short little purport, you might Something there I, I felt was a little odd, maybe my short intelligence or misunderstanding there, but why does it say out of shyness that Rukmi didn't mention this point about Krishna should be lying down? I, I don't know if anyone else was wondering why, but I was just wondering if you could, if you have any clarification on that or not. Yeah, I also read this and I was a little puzzled by that. I looked at the commentary of Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. So he didn't see, he stated the same point, but he didn't um, explain it as such. Um, so I think that uh, this is my speculation and others can um, correct. So the idea here is that Rukmi is saying something very negative to Krishna, but there's a positive to it and there's a truth to it on the other side in the same words. So the truth to the statement is that um, Krishna is not going to lie on the ground um, being pierced by Rukmi's uh, arrows, but rather Rukmi is going to die and Krishna is going to lie down, but he's going to lie down on a bed of flowers with his sister Rukmini, uh, with, um, sorry, yeah, with Rukmi's sister Rukmini. So out of shyness, my understanding is uh, because uh, Rukmi is Rukmini's uh, brother, for him to uh, mention anything uh, about her conjugal affairs with uh, her consort would be like something that a brother generally doesn't talk about. And therefore what Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says in the, um, in the Sanskrit, Rukmi says, you are going to lie down. And the real thing, the real truth of it is that Krishna is going to lie down on the bed of flowers with Rukmini. But in the Sanskrit, he doesn't quite say it. He doesn't vocalize it. Although that's what he's intimating. But he doesn't say it, although it's what he's intimating because his relationship with Rukmini is to be her brother and it's not the business of the brother to talk about what his sister does with her husband. That's my understanding. I stand to be uh, corrected by the learned assembly. <laughs> this is uh, how I understood. Okay. And there's a shyness out of fear and there's a shyness out of love. So uh, Rukmi was shy out of, out of fear. Not because of losing his sister, he already wanted to give her to Shishapa. But there's a shyness out of love from Krishna's side. So therefore it is indirectly said that you know, Krishna will lie down on the bed of flowers. So there's definitely a shyness out of fear from Rukmini, from Rukmi. Thank you, Maharaj. <coughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for a very wonderful and relevant session. While constructing Juhu Temple, Prabhupada went through a lot of challenges. Jew temple. Jew temple and many a times it looked almost impossible but Prabhupada was very consistent with his efforts mm. now when 
devotees like us go through such phases, sometimes it comes to our mind, maybe Krishna has a different plan. Mm. But that never happened, struck to Prabhupada. So at what point in time you actually start wondering, wondering is Krishna, Krishna looking for something different than what I am trying to do? Or be consistent with the effort? Okay. I think it also happened to Srila Prabhupada. It's very interesting that when Srila Prabhupada was at Jansi and there was some complication in the legal, some maneuvering, then eventually Srila Prabhupada walked away and he said, no, no, Krishna must have another plan somewhere else. He didn't dig his heels in and fight. But in Juhu, even when the devotees were telling him, like Srila Prabhupada, I think... <laughs> I think it's time to go. Srila Prabhupada was uh, adamant. He stayed. So actually, uh, I've yet to find this, but uh, I think it was someone in LA, uh, in the LA archives, they found a letter of Srila Prabhupada and he was talking about Juhu. Apparently it's an unpublished letter. I heard this some years ago. And in this letter, Srila Prabhupada is writing to the devotee and he's saying, actually I should have walked away from this Juhu project a long time ago. But something, Krishna is telling, is something to this effect. He says, Krishna is telling me, continue, continue. So it seems that when the pure devotee is connected to Krishna, Jitatmana, prashanta sya, paramatma, samahita. That when one has conquered the mind and they're in connection with the super soul, then in every situation they know, should I stay or should I go? Should I continue on or should I try something different? Should I be resilient or is it time to try something different? They know in every point of time which way to go. Sometimes it's Krishna conscious to stay and to fight it out and sometimes it's Krishna conscious to move it's like sometimes when you're distributing books in the street and nothing's happening then the book, the Sankirtan devotee gets a dilemma should I change the spot? option A, stay in the spot Krishna is testing you option B, use your intelligence this is not a good place, go to a better place in the town option C Chant around, <laughs> take a break, come back. Option D, call it a day. <laughs> Choices are always there and maybe every choice has a Krishna conscious aspect to it. So how do we know what choice Krishna wants us to make in any given situation? Is it A, B, C or D? We can only look deep within our heart, take guidance from the Vaishnavas and then try to be sincere and hear Krishna's call. Because sometimes Srila Prabhupada was resilient and stayed. And sometimes he just said, it's not Krishna's plan, let's move on. So there's always, a, there's never a stereotype. Yes, Prithupu. There was a situation here, actually, in the garden. Um, there was a complication. And Prabhupada had all the close devotees there. And he asked, how do we solve this complication? What is your opinion, Tama Krishna Goswami? So he gave his opinion. It was very nice what he said. Prabhupada said, nah, that doesn't work. Jagadish Maharaj, what is your opinion? Brahmananda was here. He asked everybody for his opinion. Everybody, every time Prabhupada said, it doesn't work. And Chabba Krishna Goswami asked Prabhupada, what is your opinion? He said, Prabhupada, I don't have an opinion. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> 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 now, let us wait what Krishna says. Let us wait. Let us change the subject. Somebody said, let us change the subject and talk about another thing. I talked over some time, and then Prabhupada lifted his hand. He said, now I know exactly what to do. And he gave this wonderful explanation, and Tamar Krishna Goswami said, Prabhupada, this explanation was kind of reflecting whatever was in some way or another. Everybody was on track in some way, you know? Like when you look at, this is also the same Prabhu, you can look at him from different sides and angles, but it's not the complete view. 
So he said, now exactly what to do. And he gave his explanation to my Krishna Goswami. How did you get that? He said, I just waited for Krishna. <laughs> so that's the way how Prabhupada operated. He would just ask Krishna and waited for Krishna sometimes to tell him. And then he was sure. Hare Krishna. Tesham satata yukta nam bhajatam priti purva kam dadam dadami buddhi buddhi yoga yogam. So when we are satata yukta, when we stay connected with Krishna, um, connected with the Vaishnavas, then eventually Krishna will uh, direct. Thank you. I guess our time is, uh, should be finished, I think, because it's past nine o'clock and it's a problem. Thank you so much for your tolerance and patience. Grantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shri Prabhupada ki jai.